Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Two Point Hospital. We are still here in Rotting Hill and uh, yeah, so we breezed through those like one star objectives. It was a pretty easy task. It just was a little bit time consuming, I guess. Now, as you can see, we've got a lot of people who don't like Rotting Hill at all and they want training. Now, the training is going to come eventually. That's absolutely fine. I'm not really going to do much to begin with because we're pretty good on our two star objectives. We're almost at that hospital value of 2 million. We have a staff morale of 80%, which we just need to maintain and our current reputation is 82 percent on top of that we just need to cure 200 patients so what i am going to do now though is duplicate my psychiatry but to do that i'm going to need to do a little bit of moving around because i'd like to keep it in this entrance building shall we say i don't want to grab that i want to grab the whole room not just the machine come on now let's get this fracture ward moved we're going to move our fracture ward into here it creates that weird little corridor but i'm honestly i'm not too bothered about the layout of this one at the moment uh we will do a little bit of changeover as we kind of progress towards the three star objectives but because this one is pretty much nailed on for us um we're not going to do any adjustments unless it's absolutely necessary so let's drop that down and that leaves a little bit of a gap so that we can put something else in and then we just need to move a few other things around right so it's time to put in our recovery room we have some pandemic patients arriving to uh use our pans lab we've got like seven to cure there but other than that we're just adding rooms as we get requests for them we've got a nice like healthy financial um footing right now uh considering this whole level is about like managing your finances and the hospital is in a little bit of a state to begin with i'm pretty happy with how well we've done financially we're going to bring in donald muesli to be our treatment doctor and we're going to have him work across all of our treatment rooms that are in here so head office shock clinic if we need it recovery room and the uh eight bitten uh room whatever that was called the repixelator whatever and that's a request for a cryptology so we can put that one down that shouldn't be too hard we've got the money certainly <laughs> and uh we are going to we'll move that toilet around because it, this one's a fairly sizable footprint so it will fit in that little gap there i don't really want to put it on like an angle here so we can bring the toilet up level with our recovery room and then our cryptology will fit in that little space that we've now created there uh, cryptology needs a nurse i do have one i think who's trained in treatment who's currently working in probably the uh, clown clinic i guess so we can move her across and have her work in both of those rooms because while we are having like more variation in the illnesses that we've got coming in we don't actually have a great deal of patience for each one so it's easy for our nurses to kind of go between two or three rooms as long as there's only a queue of like one or two people there so this one is currently working in the Dr. chromotherapy Dr. lab they can easily just move into cryptology once there's a space as you can see there's some demand here there's somebody coming in so they'll cure them then they'll go round and work in the uh, cryptology lab that probably is something that you already knew and I've just explained it. So our staff morale is at 77%. That's kind of dropped a little bit. But we're curing patients and our hospital value is knocking on the door of 2 million right now. If we satisfy our pay requests regularly and uh, maybe even just bump them up an extra 1% or something every now and then, we should be okay with that. And that should not be an issue. Let's see what we've won this year. Okay, really good. Pretty happy with that. Hospital, the only ones that we didn't get were no deaths and best research hospital. That's kind of my standard. Like, no deaths is a surprise, and best research hospital only happens when I can be bothered to do it. <laughs> right, our um, GP's officers are getting some hefty cues, so I'm going to grab the jab, master. <laughs> oh dear, terrible jokes, as always. Move it into this room, uh, where there's like a little bit less foot traffic. And then we will have another GP's office where the jab master was. I think we could probably fit in a couple, uh, which will be really nice. Uh, one thing I am concerned about regarding these queues at the GP's office is it's probably because I don't have any other diagnosis rooms. So they are constantly going to get like a GP's appointment. Then they'll go to psychiatry or something because that offers like diagnosis or they'll go to the ward and stay in the ward for a little bit and then they'll come back to the gp's office and then they'll keep going to the gps to see how far they can get towards a diagnosis which isn't good so we're gonna have to think about getting like a cardiology a mega scanner and all of that sort of stuff we have a new gp there we'll put them in and we'll have them 
work in GPs only. And look at that, a queue <laughs> at reception that goes out of the door and is threatening to curve round and go up the street. So we should probably have a second reception desk in and this is kind of making me wonder if we should do a little bit of a redevelopment and get a proper reception area in and really sort out this queuing situation because it's holding things up a little bit and probably affecting our staff morale, I guess, as well as the hospital value because we aren't getting people through quick enough to make a profit. I think I should probably revisit some of my staff rooms and just make a few adjustments to them, but for now I'm putting a load of arcade machines in, hoping that the staff will just use them from time to time. <laughs> Maybe what I should do is actually allow them to leave rooms when they're not working in them and then they could maybe walk off and play an arcade machine for a little bit or something. But at the moment our staff rooms are terrible, they're not actually helping the staff morale at all. So that's something that we do need to keep an eye on. And there we go, another nice sweep on our yearly awards. But I'm not too fussed at the moment because what we can actually do to increase our staff morale is just give them all a nice big pay rise. So if we knock out all of the other objectives first, we can then just start handing out paychecks to everybody. Like, I mean, at some point I will probably come back to this level or like I'd like to revisit a load of the levels at some point just to kind of see how far we can get or what have you. But for now, uh, I'm not too bothered about how much I'm paying people because what I can actually do is I can just sack them all when I want to come back here rather than restarting the level and having to do the objectives again. Anyway, we're going to hire a few more janitors because I've just queued in a load of upgrades and I don't want things to get out of hand in terms of like cleaning and maintenance of our stuff. So we're just going to hire and train some more staff. We're going to get diagnostics and we will have... Who can we put in here? We'll have Titus go in. Like I know he is a psychiatrist by trade, but it would be nice to have him do treatment and diagnostics as well, just in case. I'm trying to kind of work out what a, a decent combo in terms of, you know, we could get him to a level five psychiatry and then just have him work in there, actually. And I think like if I was to come back to this level and do it like a bit more long term, we'd just bring in staff and, and train them up one by one and then eventually we'd have like specialized staff for each room. You can see these queues are getting a little bit out of hand. We have an epidemic to deal with as well. Right, things are starting to stagnate here. Our staff morale hasn't really budged. We're curing patients, but very slow and queues are forming everywhere. So it's a little bit of a nightmare. Probably time to do our redevelopment. And the idea that I have is we have like, we've got four buildings here. So what we could do is have like a diagnosis room in like diagnosis building and then a further diagnosis building and then treatment rooms on this one on the right here and then another one over on the left and these two would just be in the middle focused more on diagnosis or something like that i'll maybe move my reception desk right into that middle building and then have everything kind of grow out from there so two sets of diagnosis and then treatment but we'll jump ahead and i'll explain what i've done right here we are so i did move my reception desk and gps offices i then had two psychiatries in this building as well as a pharmacy my training room staff room uh general diagnosis and a cardiology i'm just hiring a few more staff just to help us out here because things are still moving a little bit slow and i need people to now work in that general diagnosis and the cardiology so i'm just going to bring in a load more staff and then we can start specializing and training as we go and then over on the left you can see we've still got quite a few treatment rooms there in this side on the right we've got like a couple more treatment rooms as well as the ward which can be dual use treatment and diagnosis and it might well be that we start to specialize that got space here to build another kind of a toilet maybe or another staff room well we do have one in that building already so we don't necessarily need to do that i'm just going to put a toilet in instead um it's not going to be a big one again we don't have a, a lot of space here so it's better to just kind of keep everything small but I, once we've unlocked all of the plots that should change and we can really expand it our prices are hovering at around about the 30 40 percent increase mark i think i can't remember what it was last time i checked but if i wanted to i could lower them although at the moment my current reputation of 95 percent it doesn't actually mean that i need to reduce my prices but if i did have to i could do that we've had a bad year for awards but that's not too much of an issue we've almost cured our 200 patients and i'd quite like to keep the money rolling in as you can see our reputation is increasing as well even though our prices are pretty astronomical so that's not too bad. We can keep the money rolling in, which means if we do need to boost our staff wages to get the morale up, we can actually do that. Our hospital value is way over 2 million now. 
and yeah we're looking good actually what i'm expecting is these objectives will just increase so we'll have to cure more patients have a better reputation a better staff morale and a higher hospital value that seems to be the trend for this level so it would be good to kind of get a get a like a jump on that hospital value and uh, keep our reputation high and then the rest we can just do residually as long as we're having profit rolling in we can just upgrade our staff's wages and everything's fine our staff morale is starting to creep up and one of the reasons why it was suffering so much is because i have a lot of staff who haven't yet been trained who are waiting for it now that's a five percent decrease to staff morale and overall that will stack up and that could be a reason why the morale is fluctuating so much so we've du we're duplicating our training room right now and then we're going to start really hammering home the uh, training schedule for our staff. Another reason why it's taking so long is because I have such a low staff profile that a lot of my staff are working rather than being trained because I don't want queues to get out of hand. But once that diagnosis that I've just queued up is trained, I'll start training my GPs again. And hopefully as they level up and level up in their GPs uh, skills, they should be able to cope with the queues a little bit better and process patients a lot quicker. And they'll also be backed up by our um, other diagnosis rooms here. So we're going to upgrade our easy scan and our heart racer because the uh, staff that currently work in those are being trained at the moment. So it's a good time to get that done. And then we just need to get uh, a lot more staff trained and we'll satisfy some pay requests now as well. And hopefully the morale will come back up and we are just about curing our 200th patient which is really exciting because these two star objectives have taken a little bit longer than i was expecting and on what is quite an easy set of objectives there we go 200 patients cured aha found you gotcha right okay that's the epidemic done and we have a load of staff promotions and i assume it's because we've just trained people and they were already at the next kind of like xp level so once we train them they automatically level up and are ready for training again. I think that might be how it works, because uh, it's very strange that we just had three promotions on the bounce after completing the training of three staff members. But I'm going to now give everyone a 5% pay rise. And that should get us over the line and complete our one-star objectives. You can see uh, our two-star objectives. God, one star was a while ago. <laughs> there we go, we've done it. Two star objectives complete, and I think we'll probably just repeat that same method. We'll get our hospital value up. Our reputation is pretty much fixed, so that's fine. And then it's just going to be a case of grinding out our 500 patients and then giving our staff a big pay rise to take their morale back up unless I like put a lot of work into my staff rooms and stuff. Now, obviously, as we expand and we get more plots unlocked, which, you know, it shouldn't take us too long, we can like get better staff rooms and stuff in to keep the morale up but my theory is having this minus 10 percent like negative trait from just being in rotting hill um is not enough to uh, like just have your staff on like a, the average rate of pay and having like decent staff rooms and stuff. I'm going to put a DNA lab in now anyway, just to kind of get back on track on what developments I'm doing. I've upgraded most of my machines, which improves my hospital value as well. We're going to put our surgery in finally, and then we'll put a mega scanner in as well. Uh, where are you? There you are. And then we can start upgrading these. That all increases our hospital value too, as well as constantly training. So a lot of this kind of level, one of the reasons why I'm just jumping through stuff is because I don't really want to show you me just grinding out training of staff because that's pretty much all that happens in the day-to-day -day. you train staff you upgrade a machine you wait for the staff training to complete you get some cures done then unless i'm like building something new or adding something to the hospital there's not really much of a point in me showing you the uh, nitty-gritty day-to-day stuff that goes on in the hospital so we're hiring a few more doctors in here as well we've got a few good ones including a surgeon here and there was one that was just ready to go into our mega scan and that kind of covers all three of those rooms coming to the end of a year and uh, we're doing pretty well now i think i have a plan moving forward and that plan is obviously very much like the last level going to involve heavy like investment in marketing in particular towards our pharmacies because that's where the quick cures come in that's how you can get this like 500 
cures done very quickly as well as bringing in a nice bit of income and increasing your hospital value by having a, a, a better monthly profit i'm going to upgrade my helixer anyway and then we'll put a few more upgrades and stuff in as well you can see our gp queues are just never ending and uh, let's duplicate some pharmacies in preparation for this next kind of phase of development. So I'm going to put four pharmacies in right across here, which is going to overlap with that entrance a little bit, as you can see there. But that's not worrying me. We'll then start upgrading these machines and then, because at the moment we don't have enough foot traffic in here, so we'll start upgrading them, get the upgrades done so that when we do have queues and stuff building here, we're going to have fully maxed out drug mixers and hopefully have staff in here who can work in the pharmacy. So that'll be our next push as well. Then we need to build our marketing, of course. So marketing time. The idea behind the marketing campaign strategy is we push pharmacy marketing as much as possible because it's quick and easy to cure patients. We'll get a high turnaround. And as long as we have all five of our pharmacies pumping out loose cures nice and quick, we're going to get that 500 patients target hit as quick as possible. And because we're having such a large monthly turnaround of patients in that pharmacy, they'll be cured extra quick. We'll increase our hospital value in tandem with that by increasing our monthly profit on those services if that makes sense at all now i don't know what the benefit of having a level 5 prestige marketing is it may actually increase the output of your marketing or they may work more efficient i haven't really done too much marketing in this playthrough at all to be able to to kind of harness that and understand it but we're going to do level 5 prestige anyway on the room by throwing down a load of gold certificates as you can see i'm not taking too much care with the layout of this room and it's probably because i don't have blueprints but i could maybe do with making some blueprints for toilet staff rooms marketing the extra kind of stuff that i've not yet done and I might do that before crock and bush. So we'll start a marketing campaign immediately for our pharmacy. It will last six months because I found that's been the best kind of thing for me. Great stuff. So our marketing's going well. And uh, yeah. Oh, oh, what the hell's going on here? Oh God, everything is falling. There's so much vomit and litter. I've got how many? I don't have any bins. There's no bins here. Where are all the janitors? Why aren't they cleaning this up? Oh my god. I've just remembered as well, one of the major illnesses here is verbal diarrhea, which is why there's so much vomit. Oh god, what a mess. This is what happens when I spend so much time looking in one particular area of the hospital. Like the, And this is the main hub. There's so much people traffic here. What a mess. I'm going to have to hire loads more janitors to quickly solve this issue. But it's obviously because I've been doing a load of upgrading in the other building and the janitors have been kind of caught up on doing that which reminds me i probably should have set roles for the janitors as well that could have helped like stop this situation getting out of hand and obviously the more janitors i have hired the more of an issue this is going to be i've just got two assistants going on the break as well so i'm gonna to have to hire some more assistants i mean four is a little bit ridiculous for a hospital of this size i should have had more especially when i've got some that are going to be working in marketing as well oh god what a nightmare. I wonder how long this has been going on for. Look at the queues at the GP's office as well. This has gone a bit crazy. Uh, oh, we failed that emergency as well. Just when I thought everything was going well. Okay, right. Um, <laughs> well, the, the cleanup is happening. It's going well. I don't need a hint on upgrading my mega scan right now. Thank you. I mean, look at how peaceful and quiet it is over here. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What's... The wheels were definitely threatening to come off there for a moment. Right, we'll... Uh, we could... I'm not going to upgrade my drug mixers until this mess is sorted. But I think we should probably consider adjusting the layout of this room because it is a nightmare. Right, the queues are spinning out of control. So, uh, we're going to build a few more GPs offices. But first, I'm going to hire some GPs who I can actually have to work in those offices. You can see now, I don't know if this is a result of our marketing campaign and they're coming to the GPs first before they move on to the pharmacy. If that is the case, that's not too much of an issue because they'll get through the GPs pretty quickly and go straight to the pharmacy and then they'll be out of the hospital. Another thing I need to remember is there is a soft cap on the patients you can have in. So it might have been worth me actually sending all of the patients home after the marketing campaign or during the marketing campaign or something like that. And then I would have known that the only patients I've got in the hospital or predominantly 
most of the patients in the hospital are going to be for the pharmacy, which would have helped. But again, I'm risking my reputation in doing that. So it's a very fine line to tread. Anyway, we have now got another three GPs officers. I'm going to bring in a few more doctors. I don't want to pause it. I'm get, It's getting a bit chaotic. I wasn't expecting this. They, they lulled me into a false sense of security on this one, guys. Right. So GPs, let's train some GPs. We did bring in a couple of like no skilled trainee doctors there that I'm going to train up and yeah we'll have this mega scan one do it as well that works because then they can kind of when they're not working in the mega scan I mean they probably will predominantly work in the mega scan and then they can come across the GPs if we really need them to I think putting our prices up is going to be a good idea now we're at 20% at the moment we're going to bump it up to 50% I think that works our reputation's pretty solid, so I can't see us needing to... If, if I'll monitor it anyway. If that starts to drop, I can lower my prices again. But considering we're coming to the end of this marketing campaign, we want to push our hospital value up as much as possible. So increasing our prices while we're getting new patients into the pharmacy, that's a perfect combo in my opinion. And I think that's how we're going to complete the other two objectives for this level. Staff morale's a different kettle of fish, though. Right, we've kicked off our next marketing campaign. We're curing a nice amount of patients now. It's kind of moving up a little bit quicker. And our hospital value is taking a little bit of a jump too. Let's see what awards we've won this year. I'm not holding out much hope. It's been a bit of a chaotic year, so I'm guessing we're only going to get a few. Yeah, that makes sense. We retain Best Teaching Hospital for another year though, which is really good because we are finally getting some training done. Uh, and as you can see, our staff morale is at 80%, which is really good. It wasn't at that before, but now that we're moving some staff through our training schedules, we're looking pretty good. I'm not going to be reducing my prices right now. Our reputation's pretty good. Well, it can't get much better than that, really. A grey anatomy emergency. So I'm going to take this on and, oh god, an epidemic as well. Bloody hell. They like to throw multiple things at us. So we're going to duplicate our chromotherapy lab and put it in this new building up here. And what I want to do is I want to start like duplicating machines when I get an emergency because once again it increases the value of our hospital and it'll start moving traffic through to other areas. I really wish I'd put a little bit more effort into the training early doors because we had the money to do it and uh, it might have helped things a lot better. This needs to be sorted so we're gonna just go out on a whim here and we're gonna actually move the reception desk into this building. We'll make this my kind of residual building but what this is now going to do though which I do need to be aware of although I'm not too bothered because I'm pretty confident that we're going to have this one wrapped up really soon but we need to be aware of the fact that this now gives the patients a very long journey to reception to then have to go back to the GP's office and then potentially move around somewhere else in the hospital so we've got to be very careful with that however I think it would be a much better idea to have them all coming up to here and uh, moving all of those queues into this building. You can see them all running. The hordes are now coming to this new reception area. Let me edit the damn room. The uh, awards are gonna pass us by here because I'm too busy. No, I don't want to. Ah! Okay, right, we got it. We're, we're done, we're in. I don't know what awards we won. Let's just pretend we won every single award. That's That's what we'll do. Anyway, you can see now the queues are forming at our brand new reception. Look at the masses. Look at them all. As we're moving into this building as well, I'm going to put in a brand new staff room that's going to have a lot more space. And hopefully that'll keep our staff happy. We're going to fill this one out and get it to prestige level 5 just by throwing in as many random items as we possibly can that the staff can use for entertainment and food and drink and stuff. And it's just a little private room for them. Obviously, if staff do end up preferring to use this room over the other ones, they're going to have a long walk to come from another area of the hospital. But I'm hoping just my assistants use this one. <laughs> And whoever ends up working in the uh, chromotherapy department that we've got here as well. But we are going to be adding a few more bits and pieces into this as I'm guessing this is my next expansion room. But we probably won't need too much because we only need to cure our 500 patients and then we'll just give everyone a big like end of end of level pay rise we'll call it, for uh, doing such a good job of putting up with my terrible management. Another epidemic, I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, I can take the reputation hit. We dropped down to 97%, but that's not too much of a problem for us. We'll just uh, continue pushing this. There's the hospital value ticking up again. 
and uh, I don't know if that was complete. I'm pretty sure that was already completed, and uh, it might I might have dropped and then increased. <laughs> I haven't been keeping an eye on it. But we are at prestige level five, and that's that done. Excellent stuff. A final cure is about to happen. There we go. Right, 500 patients done. And actually, our staff morale is slowly increasing, so I may not need to do the pay rise right now, but I'm going to satisfy any pay requests that we have right there. And then let's just boost everybody a little bit. There we go. Most of them very happy with their pay rises there. Oh, oh wait. I've only done the doctors. What an idiot. I'm just giving people individual pay rises now be oh. What a nightmare. Right, we'll just make sure everybody's happy in the doctors and then yep, that's looking good. Everybody fairly happy with their pay rises. Oh, I can't believe I've done that. Anyway, we'll go to we'll go to all <laughs> this time and we'll just give everyone a flat 1% pay rise, which means our doctors are going to be very, very overpaid now. So we'll just boost this all the way up until everybody's relatively happy. That looks good. Our assistants, we'll, we'll give them pay rises individually. Yeah, that's looking good. And oh, another epidemic. Leave me alone. I'm not doing it. Let everybody get infected. And then boosting this lot again. Janet is very happy. Excellent. Right, this should see our, rep our staff morale get up to that 95% mark. And uh, we can actually say goodbye to this level. But I have learned quite a bit this time, uh, mainly to make sure that I'm doing training regularly whenever I can afford it, because that's one of the reasons why they were so unhappy. Like that 5% negative impact, as well as the 10% from Rotting Hill, has been a bit of a nightmare. The staff morale thing has probably been the most difficult objective. Uh, everything else kind of happened like in tandem with the uh, progression of the level itself. So while these were easy objectives to complete, they were pretty time consuming. And uh, you can see now, even just by giving them the massive pay rise, that staff morale is only very slowly increasing. Maybe I could have put a bit more effort into my staff rooms or making sure that I have a large staff footprint for this level. But there was a lot to kind of pick up on and a lot to learn. Everybody's fairly happy, but I am just going to give them another little pay rise. Let's get them all green. There we go. Right, everybody's green. Green with happiness, not green with envy. Everyone else working in other hospitals is going to be green with envy at the pay that these lot are getting. We are at 90% of 95. Uh, I, and I kind of learned a little bit more about the patient flow. Whilst these uh, GPs' queues are, are pretty high, I'm wondering if just having a few more diagnosis rooms would have held that kind of keep reduced. But do remember, I've not done a lot of training in this one, so that could be another reason why the queues are kind of spinning out of control, because my doctors aren't fully trained up yet. And in previous levels, I always made a little bit more of an effort to train them fully. And there we go! Three stars in Rotting Hill. Let's tackle Croc and Boosh! Oh, I'm very excited about this. We are almost done with the base game of Two Point Hospital. It's been a long journey, and this was something on the channel that, you know, um, it was only like a sporadic thing for me, and then I got really into it. So it's kind of really took off for me personally. I know a lot of people don't watch it because it's an old game, but I wanted to finish it. I don't like leaving a series unfinished on my channel, which is why once this done, I'll be revisiting some of my other stuff in the weekday kind of releases of content but i would imagine like if i was to do this again we kind of effectively have two different hospitals here we've got five there and then five rooms on the other side and you would kind of have two reception areas on either side right in the middle and then have those patients funneling through into different areas this might be one that i revisit in the future and kind of make it look really aesthetically pleasing and just kind of rebuild it from the ground up but i hope you enjoyed this episode thanks for watching guys and i will see you next time Bye-bye.